Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to this Friday Eve edition of the Houston Round Ball Review Takeover, powered by JMNE and sponsored by the Saxony family. Bless them for keeping me afloat for this final month of October, this remaining month, of these few weeks of October. And then we'll go from there and see how everything goes. But I am, of course, KG Chris Gardner, owner of the Houston Round Ball Review, coming to you from the greater fifth, the bloody nickel, Fifth Ward, Texas. Going to talk some sports with you for this next 55 minutes and change. Rockets are training camp right now this week. We're here right now. Going on right now over at the new facility. The old Landry's Warehouse, so Landry's Distrib Distribution Center. Uh, may be there Friday. I doubt it, though. But um, we can talk some Rockets. We can talk some Big 12. I want to say this. I'm going to go backwards, go a little bit backwards. Dikembe Mutombo passed away on Monday, September 30th, at the age of 58, after a battle with brain cancer. Tributes are have poured in from all over basketball, the world, politicians, celebrities, on and on, honoring Deke and what he meant to everyone. But he was a funny man. He was, he was a great man, humanitarian, heck of a defensive player, all of those things. Y'all know that. But uh, about an hour ago, his family issued a statement. I just want to read that, and then I'm going to play a clip from Rockets GM Rafael Stone from Monday's Media Day about uh, Deke's passing. So first few moments of today's show. Be a little somber, but serious as well. And then we'll get into more info and things of that sort. But this was shared on behalf of the family of Dikembe Mutombo. And let me change just a little bit. I want to give Deke some more flowers here. Let me figure this out real quick. No shade to... Uh, Let's just do this. Let me just do, let me see here. Hide it. There we go. We are deeply grateful for the outpouring of love and condolences we have received from people around the world following the passing of, of our beloved Dikembe. Dikembe was a, was a servant of God, a wonderful husband, a father, humanitarian, and athlete. He touched countless lives on and off the court with his generosity, compassion, and unwavering dedication to improving the lives of others. Your kind words and condolences during these past two years, especially this past week, have brought us immense comfort during this difficult time. We want to acknowledge and thank the multi-D team within the Piedmont Brain Tumor Center, Shepherd Rehab Hospital, MBA physician, Dr. Leroy Sims, consulting physicians and colleagues worldwide, including Dr. Aaron Dunbar, Dr. Curtis J. Coley II, Dr. Adam Nolan, Dr. Tyler Kenning, Dr. Ford Vox, Dr. Fadia Payal, Dr. Jared Potter, and a host of other healthcare professionals, nurses, therapists, and home care providers, particularly Charles Benton, who remained by Deke's side these last months. We also want to thank our NBA and Georgetown families and friends for their love and support. In the coming days, we will be holding a private service for family and then working together with the NBA to hold a larger event at a later date to celebrate Dikembe's extraordinary life and legacy. In lieu of flowers, we encourage donations to the Dikembe Matumbo Memorial Fund, which will benefit the causes and organizations that Dikembe dedicated his life to supporting. Thank you once again for your kindness, understanding, and continued respect for our privacy as we navigate this profound loss. You see a picture of his family there and here's a clip from monday's media day from rocket gm or Stone.
he, uh, uh, you know, he, he's been kind of a towering figure in the NBA uh, for the last 30 years, really, uh, and not just in the NBA and basketball. Um, and and so I think for the game, game it's it's a really sad day. Uh, you know, I don't know why it's playing slowly like that. So I'll come back to that later on. We'll see if we can get that fixed. But Rafael, one of the comments Rafael made was when Deke was here, his time with the Rockets organization. Rafael was learning the ropes. So he and Deke grew up together when Deke was a Rocket. So that's really when I wanted to come and get across there from Rafael Stone Rockets GM. But rest in peace, Mount Matumbo, a mountain of a man, a mountain of a human being, a great person. Rex, thank you for chiming in. Thank you for your comment. Miss Juana, good afternoon to you as well. Thank you, you two stalwart supporters of the Houston Round Ball Review. Thank you for your support. Rex, I'm going to shift gears again. Remember last Thursday. Last Thursday, the lunch break, the takeover, aired one hour before the Big 12 announced the conference schedule for men's hoops. When I did the show last Thursday, the Big 12 had already announced the conference schedule for women's basketball. And last Thursday, during, I posted a slide of from the Big 12 regarding the women's basketball conference schedule. And on that slide in the upper right corner had presented by Allstate. It was obvious to everyone. It's still on the Big 12 website. However, this slide is for men's basketball. There is no there's nothing in the upper right corner of the slide. Obviously, on my slide is sponsored by the Saxony family, but there is no mention of presented by Allstate. And yes, I find it interesting. I thought it was interesting last Thursday. It still surprises me, it makes me say, hmm. But it's both, both of them are on. Still on the Big 12 website. One has the Allstate logo for women's hoops. Men's hoops does not have the All-Star logo. I don't know what it means, if anything, but here's some information. Last Thursday, the Big 12 released the 2024-25 men's basketball conference schedule. It's first as a 16-team league. Teams will play five Big 12 opponents twice and the other 10 conference opponents once for a total of 20 games. I'm going to stop right there. Loyal, long time, long time followers of the Houston Round Ball Review. Via this show, via folks talking sports, and this goes, we're going back, back when Andy Yanez was before, before he became a teacher, and there was a trio, Andy, Willie Gibson, and myself, on FTS, Folk Talking Sports. We discussed the possible scenarios regarding the 20 game conference schedule for Big 12 men's basketball. And what was discussed when we put weight in and thought what happened was teams will play five Big 12 opponents twice and the other 10 conference opponents once. We discussed that two years ago. Lo and behold, Big 12 made it official. So there you go. Opponents were selected based on a combination of geography, historical results, and a poll of the coaches to best balance the schedule in terms of travel and competitiveness. Teams will begin conference play Monday, December 30th, and finish the regular season Saturday, March 8th. 
the Big 12's men's basketball championship will be conducted Tuesday to Saturday, March 11th through 15th at T-Mobile Center in Kansas City, Missouri, which is also the site of the Big 12 Media Days later this month. <clears throat> Sip of your Victoria mug, everyone. <clears throat> Finalized details on times and television designations will be announced at a later date. In its new alignment, the Big 12 boasts nine teams coming off a trip to March Madness. After leading the nation and setting a conference record with eight bids to the 2024 NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Championship. The Big 12 has finished the season with the nation's best average net ranking for four consecutive seasons, cementing its status as the top league in the sport. That's great. New, this is for fans. Rex, Miss Wanda, folks who have time and money. New for the 2025 championship in Kansas City, Big 12 basketball all access packs will provide fans the opportunity to purchase the same great seat location on unprecedented access, unprecedented access, premium hospitality, and much more. The exclusive experience includes access to guaranteed seat locations through 2031, access to all Big 12 men's basketball championship games throughout the week, brand new hospitality clubs and amenities with all inclusive food and beverage and new revenue streams to support each Big 12 school and student asset. Big 12 teams will open the regular season Monday, November 4th with non-conference action. So your thoughts on that? Hmm, interesting. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how many fans, Cougar fans, buy that and participate in that. So now that we got the schedule, let me see. Go back in time here. <clears throat> here is the U.S. Cougars men's basketball conference schedule. What are your thoughts on it? We got 10 games each on two slides for a total of the 20 conference games. Conference opener in Stillwater against Oklahoma State on December 30th. Then home to BYU on January 4th, followed by home game against TCU on the 11th. At K-State, excuse me, TCU on January 6th, at K-State on January 11th. Home versus the Mountaineers from West Virginia on January 15th at UCF on January 18th, home against Utah, the running Utes, at Kansas, Lawrence, Kansas, going back to fog, <clears throat> hoping for a better result than last year, Saturday, January 25th, stay on the road, I'm assuming, going to still, excuse me, going to West Virginia <clears throat> on the 29th, home game against Texas Tech, on February 1st. So those 10 games, Miss Wanda, Rex, folks watching on Facebook, on the Houston Round Ball Review Facebook page. Just got a thumbs up from someone. Thank you for that. As well as on the YouTube channel, the Houston Round Ball Review YouTube channel. And of course, on Roku via the BS3 network. And I see things powering down here and on the signal, and I don't know what's going on. It's just really starting to frustrate me how things are going. But, of course, you can watch the show on Roku via BS3 Network. Just download the BS3 streaming device. Excuse me, just download BS3 TV. If not, you can go to bs3network.com or bs3tvlive.com where you can watch Houston Round Ball Review shows on demand via the BS3 TV app. 
I'm, I guess like I can say I don't know what's going on. C A thirty seven. I'm seeing all kinds of strange things going on. This is this is Mike is good. This is just a strange thing. Again, I don't know if the neighborhoods change and and things are messing with me. I have no idea. It pebble mountaintop to hit hill, etc., whatever to overcome. And it's just interesting. Let me see. Justin says, do you, I think University of Houston needs a private jet? Thank you for bringing that up. I'm going to talk about that right now. Justin, thank you. <clears throat> well, no, hold that thought. Because I want to fit, fit the schedule first. But remind me about that, Justin, in a few minutes. Rest of the schedule for the fellas. Home versus Oklahoma State on February 4th. At Colorado on February 8th. Big Monday. I'm assuming that's a big Monday. February 10th. Home versus Baylor. Then going on the road. Pretty sure they're going to stay on the road. At Arizona, February 15th. That's a Saturday. Probably CBS. Then at Arizona State on February 18th. Home versus Iowa State. Saturday, February 22nd. Going to Lubbock. February 24th. Home versus Cincinnati on March 1st, Saturday, March 1st, then Monday, March 3rd, that's senior night. That is senior night. Home versus Kansas. And then close out the conference schedule in Waco on Saturday, March 8th. So get the Jayhawks for the second straight year for senior day. This past season, senior day, Cougs won in a rout. We'll see what happens March 3rd, 2025. All right. Now, Rex says the backside of the schedule is a real challenge. Games against Baylor, and you got February 10th, Monday, then Saturday for March 8th against Baylor. But now getting back to this. Oops, just lost it. Just lost. Here we go. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> Question is, if I think University of Houston needs a private jet, like Kelvin suggested, to go not to games, it's for recruiting purposes. Because coups do charter to go to the games. Coach Sampson does not want a private jet. Let me say it again. Hopefully the audio is better. Coach Sampson does not want a private jet, private plane. Coach Sampson wants, and I looked it up because he mentioned it last, was that Wednesday? Tuesday, whatever. When he spoke to Wednesday, that's Wednesday. He mentioned, he said a phrase. He said he wants Houston Athletics to have its own net jet. NetJet Hours. NetJet is a company. NetJet is a fleet of private planes. NetJet, that is the name of the company. Coach Sampson wants UH to have its own account, UH Athletics, to have its own account with NetJet. Not a private plane, an account with NetJet to have their own NetJet hours. When Coach Sampson mentioned it, he said right now the way things are set up, he has to use the NetJet hours from UH alums. He doesn't want to have to rely on the alums who have NetJet accounts. He wants UH Athletics to have its own NetJet account and have its own net jet hours. That's what he's talking to, talking about. Uh, <clears throat> couldn't Kelvin just use Tillman's jet like the Astros do again? It's not. It's not just about Kelvin. It's about the all the coaches. 
The head coach is at UH. Coach Fritz, volleyball, basketball. When it comes to recruiting, is one jet. The coach can't fly. If the if Coach Fritz and Coach Sampson have to go two different places, they can't use the same jet at the same time. UH had has its own account with a private company. Then they could schedule. Okay, I need plane one. He or she needs plane two. Same date, same time, but we're going to two different places. No problem, UH. We, we got that handled. We got you covered. We'll take care of it. That's the issue. The price that I mentioned last Thursday is still the same. Still a quarter million dollars. But it's about UH Athletics having its own account for net jet hours. I did some more checking, and there are other, obviously, companies, private charter that, that charter have their own fleet of planes. And I don't know the price difference, if it's better or worse or whatever. But there are some here based in Houston that the money, like I said, the money, $250,000 or whatever it is for a year. That's for a year, per year. That's a lot to me. That's, that's a hell of a lot to me. But to a quote unquote power program, a program that claims to want to compete for championships, that should not be anything but a drop in the bucket. So that is the issue. NetJet Hours, that is a name of a company. The company is NetJet. And I think the website, I mean, hell, I'm giving all, all this pub, you know, and they're not paying me squat. But hell, I'll let your boy if you want to, you know. And see, these girls, these girls is money guy. He knows these things, you know. Many companies use jet services as it's cheaper than buying one. Not sure why UH is being so cheap if they need it. And they need it. They need it. It's apparent they need it. But yeah, Rex, I get I get your point here. OC salary, because he makes 750. You are correct. A third, yeah. You got it right there, 750. Coach Barbe, yeah. And these skills brings it up. The question is if UH actually wants to do what it takes to win big. That's the question right there, everybody. Justin, Rex, Miss Wanda. Does UH truly understand, realize what it takes to compete to win championships at the higher level of athletics? Do they understand that? And then if they understand it, are they willing to get it done? Uh, I know, I know your LOL, Justin, I, and I know where you're going with it. I mean, you know, my answer, yeah, he needs it. And the next head coach needs it too. Assuming there will be a next head coach, women's basketball head coach, because it aids in recruiting. It's easier to get to tournaments to see a star player or a, a workout at that high school or, or whatever at eight in the morning, if it's in Florida or Philadelphia or Chicago or California, whatever, fly there, fly back, go see another recruit. But it comes down to it. Let me, let me put this up one more time. Many companies use jet services as it's cheaper than buying one. That is what Coach Sampson is referred to last week. Is a company that provides jet services, not his own private plane. He's not talking about that. Some folks, what is Coach talking about? He knows a lot. Of, if you if you want a private plane, go ahead and pay, buy it. No, all, all that kind of stuff. You know, he's an employee of the university. But anyhow, <clears throat> so. Excellent, excellent line right here, Miss Wanda Polk, the queen of 
supporters of the Houston Round Ball Review. We want championships on a Walmart budget. I need to make a shirt out of that. We want championships on a Walmart budget. In fact, let me see if I have this one to what coming from the top rope. Let me see if I have the sound effect for that. Let me see. I hope I do. Uh, here we go. And a bing for being correct. And then again, kiss here. And one more time. We want championships on a Walmart budget. It's one that you have won the quote of the day. Salute. Salute, salute. Okay. Bobby asks, is UH planning on getting its own jet services or will it continue using boosters? The plan is to get their own account. <laughs> That's how I'll say like that. That is the plan. That is what I've heard. I think Mr. Nunez understands that, understands the need of that, the importance of it. Working to make it happen. So, yes. D Skill says, I would argue that they're trying to do with a big lots budget. <laughs> and Justin, I agree with you right here. I'll give it to Kelvin. He is constantly pushing UH to be better. He has worked in big programs and coached in the NBA. He knows what works. I'm going to give you a salute as well for that because you are correct. <laughs> and he continues to receive headway, headwinds for wanting to bring UH forward and push UH forward and, and strive for UH athletics to be better. Y'all heard it. Y'all hear in the comments all the time. Any, any chance he he has to make a point with the media, he does so. So that that's where it's coming from. It's not a you know, it's not from coach trying to it's all about that's not all about him, nothing like that. He wants UH athletics to be the best that it can be. So I'm gonna take a break because I'm gonna come back and talk rice and and some NCAA tournament news because Rice and I have some news, something I've never heard before happened before. And I'm curious if y'all have either, but be back. It's near the bottom of the hour. You are watching the Houston Round Ball Review Takeover, sponsored by the Saxonian family. It's pop this show is powered by JM and E. And because of increases in price, we're on fewer destinations live. We're now just on the Houston Round Ball Review Facebook page, the Houston Round Ball Review YouTube channel, and on Roku via the BS3 network and BS3 TV. If you are new to it, if you are wondering what it's about, this clip that I will play will give you a good indication of what BS3 network is all about. Be back and 35 seconds. I am Chris Gardner of the Houston Round Ball Review. Be back shortly. BS3 Network. Changing the way you watch TV. Welcome back to this edition of the Houston Round Ball Review Takeover, sponsored by the Saxonian family. 
The show is, of course, well, not, not of course, but streaming live on YouTube via the Houston Round Ball Review YouTube channel, Facebook via the Houston Round Ball Review Facebook page, and Roku via the BS3 network. Just got an email from the Big 12. Uh, the Big 12 announced preseason awards. I'm going to just try to read part of it. I don't know. I'm reading live from my phone, so I don't know anything about it. Okay, so I'm just going to read the predictions. Well, I don't know about the predictions, but the preseason. Oh, dude, this includes the preseason poll. Usually, it includes what they say the poll for media day for chip off. But everybody, should I start from the bottom or from the top? What do you think? Where Where do you think I should start? Where do you think the Houston Cougars women's team? is projected to be is picked in the preseason poll where, where do you think where, where do you think these skills you got an answer rich i'm not going to talk rockets today no nope. not much to talk about really training camp we don't see much <laughs> you know so but when i talk about them it'll be on the uh let's talk houston, houston rockets show so that's coming up but here we go these skills said it so Miss Wanda said it. All right, Rick said it. I'm gonna do it this way. Start from the top. But y'all are wrong based on the comments that y'all have posted already. Number one, Kansas State. Kind of a surprise. Hmm. Well, they got a veteran squad returning. And Yoka Lee 66, she's returning for her like 80th year. Number one, K-State. Number two, Iowa State. Three, Baylor. Four, TCU. Five, West Virginia. Six, Utah. Seven, Arizona. Eight, Kansas. Nine, Colorado. Ten, Texas Tech. Eleven, Oklahoma State. Twelve, BYU. Thirteen, Cincinnati. Fourteen, UCF. Fifteen, Arizona State. There are 16 teams in the Big 12. Who have I not mentioned? That's right. 16th, the foundation of the poll, the Houston Cougars women's basketball team. 16 with us, with the thug. Because 15, let me just read this for you. I got a kick out of this. BYU at 12 has 59 points. Cincinnati at 13. 56 points. UCF, 14. 54 points. Arizona State, 15. 51 points. So that's four teams ranging from 59 to 51. 16. In 16th spot, 27 points. The Houston Cougars women's basketball team, I'm scanning here. From 15 to 16, so one spot difference, that's 24 points. The next largest variance is between fifth and sixth place. I think the top five teams are pretty pretty certain, pretty locked in. That's K-State, Iowa State, Baylor, TCU, and West Virginia. That's top five. I think they're probably all ranked in the way too early Top 25, that's pretty much consensus. So that top five is pretty much etched in stone. So West Virginia at five has 184 points. Utah at six has 149. So the difference between five and six is 35 points. The difference between 15 and 16 is 24 points. <clears throat> I'm not going to say anything else. What else What else needs to be said? I'm not going to say anything else. But I'll, I'll, no, 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 that's not true. I'm not going to lie. I'll say one more thing. If the current head coach 
of the women's basketball program returns next season for his 12th season. Oh my goodness. Whenever, if ever it's official and like UH makes an announcement with a press release or whatever, I am going to light them up. It will be epic, epic, epic. Talk some, we'll get to the American in a second. Some Big 12 also made some news in a different way. Let's see if I got the right thing. <clears throat> All right. Big 12 men basketball was selected to host the 2027 NCAA men's hoops regional in Kansas City. The Big 12 would join forces with the Kansas City Sports Commission to host the Division I men's basketball Midwest Regional during the 27th NCAA tournament at the T-Mobile Center. With the 2027 selection, the Big 12 has had 18 opportunities to host men's March Madness since the conference began competition in 1997. It was previously announced that the conference would host the NCAA first and second rounds at the Paycom Center in OKC in 2026, plus the 2030 NCAA Men's Final Four at Jerry World in Arlington, Texas. Check this out. Women's Basketball Championship. NCAA announced the regional host, regional host for 2027 and 2028. The NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Committee selected Las Vegas and Philly in 2027 and Portland, Oregon and Washington, D.C. in 2028 to host the regional rounds of the NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship. Regional championship play in 27 will take place March 26th through 29th with Las Vegas, T-Mobile Arena, in Philadelphia, Wells Fargo Center, hosting six regional championship games. So Elite 316 and Elite Eight. A piece over six games over a piece over the four days. In 2028, Portland Motor Center and Washington, D.C. Capital One Arena will host regional play March 24th through 27th. This will be the first time that women's basketball championship has been in Las Vegas since 1991. I remember that. Wow. Okay. For the West Regional and DC since 1997. It will be the first time, blah, blah, blah. Philadelphia will be hosting its first regional since 2011 and fifth overall, but its first women's basketball tournament action at the Wells Fargo Center since it hosted the 2000 NCAA Women's Final Four. Portland hosted regional play in 2024 at the Motor Center and is slated to host the 2030 Women's Final Four. The committee went to the two regional site format for hosting in 2023, resulting in record regional attendance the last two championships. That could just be the Caitlin Clark effect. We shall see how it is next year. With the 24 regional attendance totaling a record 103,587 fans for nearly a 13,000 average per session with games held in Albany, New York and Portland. Reasonable play, this irks me, reasonable play in 2025 will take place March 28th through 31st in Birmingham, Alabama at the Legacy Arena and Spokane, Washington, Spokane Veterans Memorial in 2026, Fort Worth, Texas. Dickey's Arena and Sacramento, California, the Golden One Center will host the regional championship rounds March 27th through 30th. <sighs> Fort Worth, Texas, Dickey's Arena is hosting a regional for women. Be clear, for women.
Notice I didn't say Houston at all. Any, any of that. I, you know. <clears throat> I, I, I'm again to one. If these skills is correct, that they refuse to come to Houston for women's basketball, women's tournament. The committee, these Houston Sports Authority, will not bid for the women's basketball, won't bid on anything but Final Fours. I know that. I've been told that. Because I tried to get them to host a regional for women's basketball. At Virginia Center. Because for the regionals, you don't need to have a large arena. Oh, no, we don't want to do that, Chris. We don't want to do that. No, no, we won't do that. Okay. Okay. So I digress. Okay. Also last Thursday, the American Athletic Conference you are correct, which is another reason reason years ago I wanted to get Houston in the mix to get them to host some women's events, basketball events, to get the ball rolling to bring the WNBA back to Houston. But of course, what do I know? So, <clears throat> one of the few folks in Houston that gives a damn about women's basketball for 30 years, but you know, I don't know anything. But, but anyway, and yes, I am still bitter about that and will continue to be so. I don't know if he's watching, but Big Thrillo, his alma mater, Texas Southern, Groundbreaking today. We'll break ground today for a new baseball and softball stadiums. Both facilities will be located on the corner of Cleburne and Sampson Streets, which is across from the TSU East Garage and on the current site of the Yates High School baseball slash softball fields. Oh, let me see. Justin, what is, what is this? Are you talking about the, uh, let me know if she has, Miss Miss Lady, did she make her announcement today? Miss Miss Chavez, did she make her a decision already? Goodness knows me where she wasn't coming to Houston. We know that. Uh, so I know she's, it's down to Texas and Texas Tech for Aaliyah Chavez. But, <clears throat> So salute to TSU and Astros owner management is involved in this construction of the new baseball and softball stadiums for Texas Southern. The softball stadium will have a capacity of 480, while the baseball stadium is slated to seat 1,080 spectators. Both stadiums will, have, will share a concession stand and will have locker room space for both programs along with press boxes and lighting for night contests. The baseball stadium will also feature VIP seating for 80 spectators as both stadiums are projected to officially open in the spring of 2026. So that is some good news for TSU baseball fans. Here's a diagram of how it will look once it's done. Let's see if I can make this do this a little bit. So let's see here. Let's take this off just for a moment. So you get an idea of the baseball field a little larger than the softball field. Stadium, see the fence there, locker rooms. So I'm not a baseball fan anymore, but it's good that TSU is getting some support for athletics. So kudos to the folks involved for making that happen. Okay, let me see if I can get to it. Last Thursday, the American Athletic Conference announced the conference schedules for men's and women's basketball. Let me see. There's for Rice. 
I, I moved past Rice women's basketball for a reason. But here's the men's conference schedule opening up New Year's Day night at Tulsa, January 1st, and home for, for Charlotte on January 4th, at North Texas on the 8th, versus Temple on the 11th, versus UTSA on January 14th, at FAU on January 19th, home against Tulane on January 25th, at South Florida on January 28th, home versus Penny Hardaway Memphis. I guess Penny will still be in charge by then. At East Carolina on February 5th, at Charlotte on February 8th, home versus North Texas on February 11th, at Tulane on February 15th, versus UAB on February 19th, versus Tulsa on February 22nd, at Memphis on the 26th, at UAB March 2nd, and then closing it out, senior night at home against Wichita State, oh, March 6th. Coach Paul Mills finally gets to come to Texas. He used to, he was on staff at Rice years ago. Some Baylor staff helped them win, and now he's head coach at of the Shockers at Wichita State. But before I get into this right here, Rice women's schedule, Thursday, as I said, the conference announced, released these schedules for men's and women's basketball in the American. Friday, the very next day, the American put out a release because they noticed there was an issue in the scheduling that impacted a couple of teams. So the info that was released, the schedule that was re were released on Thursday, disregard. Never mind. My bad. The conference said that they hoped they went through their they noticed the errors. They apologized for the errors. They worked to try to get them corrected. To everything announced on Friday. Didn't happen. Initially, he said we're going to have it done by Monday the 30th. Didn't happen. October 1st, didn't happen. So yesterday, they finally sent out the revised conference schedules for all of its member schools. And it impacts Rice women's basketball greatly, <laughs> immensely, because the original version of the schedule, Rice, I think, started opening the season at Temple. Now, the revised schedule, they host South Florida. South Florida will be projected, most likely, be the preseason favorite to win the conference. Last, last year, injuries derailed them, and they had a, a very unlike South Florida season. Struggle to win, be competitive, all that. But now they're healthy. Got one of the best players back from injury. So the Owls now start their conference schedule at home against the top team in the conference <laughs> on December 29th. And then they will go to New Orleans on New Year's to face Tulane and go to San Antonio against UTSA on January 8th, home against Memphis on the 12th, at North Texas on January 15th, and home against East Carolina. Those first six games, mm, those six opponents are probably six of the top teams in the conference. Rice face them off the bat, women's side. Then at UAB on January 22nd, at Charlotte on the 25th, home against Tulsa on the 29th, at Fort Atlantic on February 1st, home against Tulane February 5th, at South Florida on February 12th, at the Shockers on February 15th, home versus FAU on February 18th, home versus UTSA on February 22nd, home versus UAB February 25th, at Temple on February 28th, and then senior night, Tuesday, March 4th against, against North Texas. That's not an easy schedule for the Owls. 
Coach Edmonds. That's that's a tough schedule. You see that January 22nd through February 15th, Rice has one, two, three, five road games, five out of seven on the road. And get some tough teams. So we'll see how that all plays out for the Owls. And Coach Edmonds has said, she said it on this show. She said it again Tuesday after practice. She wants Rice to have a higher seed this season. She does not want Rice to be a 14 seed. She does, she does not want Rice to be at LSU. Rather be at a more neutral location. So that means you got to be like around <clears throat> like a 10 or 11, something like that. So she has high expectations for her squad this year. They returned practically everybody from last year's team, except their point guard, Destiny Jackson, who was their engine, made everything go. She, she graduated. So replacing her is going to be huge. It's probably the only question mark for them. Rice also has two very good freshmen. One of them, Miss Anaya Alexis, Justin, is from this area. Justin, Anaya Alexis, chose Rice over Houston. I have so much respect for Rice, women's basketball specifically, the academics, but folks, folks, if you are this is coming from a U8 alum perspective. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> That's it right there. <clears throat> Anaya chose Rice over Houston. She wanted to stay at home, host a home for her family to watch her play. She did not choose the Big 12 and Houston. She chose the American and Rice. And I know Rice has academics. I know that. Hell of a degree. Hell of an education. I know that. I understand that. But the fact she chose Rice over Houston says a lot. And a reminder, one more time, the Big 12 Women's Basketball announced its preseason poll, along with Player of the Year predictions, etc. Last place with a bud In 16th place out of 16 teams, the Houston Cougars, the Ronald Huey coached Houston Cougars. <clears throat> 11 years, folks, 11 years, 11 years. Folks still seem, folks are still shocked when I mentioned to them that Coach Huey and Coach Sampson have both been at UH the same amount of time. Whew. All right. Friday, last thing, October 4th, 6.30 p.m. Central Time. God bless ESPN for still showing this game. They didn't have a choice. <laughs> Can't get out of it. The Houston Cougars football team. The team hadn't scored a point in three weeks now. They haven't scored, they've been shut out the last two games. They're playing TCU in Fort Worth. <clears throat> Will the Cougs score against TCU? Make your predictions in these final closing moments of this show. Will the Cougs finally score and end the scoring drop? Will they get off the schneid? Because TCU defense is not very good. But the Cougars offense is worse. As Rex says, we are on TD watch. <laughs> I'm like, let's get a field goal. <laughs> he skills, Cougars will get, a, will get a field goal. He skill says, I have the feeling there are going to be a lot of folks at other games during the, yep. 
Miss Wanda says a field goal for the Cougs. This is where that's where things are. And TCU minus 16 and a half. That's the line. 16 and a half. Oh, I agree, Justin. This, this was going to be a bad year. No question. The folks who expected more this season, that's that was wishful thinking on their part. And there are some folks who who want Coach Brits fired. Give me a break. With what he inherited, one, that is asinine. Two, UH is broke. They're still paying off the guy who just left, who was fired. Got to pay him, what, what is it, 40 more months of him. They're not going to pay off another coaching staff. They don't have that kind of money. Please. But Action Pack Show, again, Rest in peace to Dikembe Mutombo. Great man, great player, great man, great person, great humanitarian. R.I.P. Deke. Condolences to your family, your friends, and everyone whose life, whose lives you impacted. Thank you to Justin, and Miss Wanda, and Rex, and D Skills, and C37 for watching this edition of the Houston Round Ball Review Takeover, sponsored by the Saxonian family. Streaming live on YouTube and Facebook and Roku on Roku via the BS3 network. I'll be back next week, hopefully. Got to finish off this month, these next four weeks of sponsorship, and they will go from there. Everyone, keep this in mind. Since 1994, the Houston Round Ball Review. Local name, global perspective. Everyone. Take care. Peace.